Hi there folks, welcome to Doc Talk. Man, I'm glad that you joined us today. We have Dr. Dave Rethorst here from Kansas State University. And we're gonna talk about what to do with those open cows and, and cows that are non-pregnant. It's bound to be a great show. Dr. Dave's always a great guest to have on the show. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you here in a minute. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress, powered by Kansas farmers. Doc Talk, brought to you by Brown Chevrolet Buick. In Wamego, just a short drive down the Yellow Brick Road. Welcome to the show. Good to be here, Dan. Good to have you here, Dr. Dave. Folks, this is Dr. Dave Rethorst, and he is a faculty member at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine, where he works at the Beef Cattle Institute and he is the director of, of outreach and has had a little bit of experience on pregnancy testing cows and, and sleeving cows in his, how many years? 35 years. 35 years of bovine practice. So somebody that has a lot of experience, has a lot of practical field experience, and we're gonna talk about pregnancy. So let's just start out with it, uh, Dave. Uh, you know, why, are, why do we preg check? Well, Dan, you got to go back and remember that marketing of our cull cows can account for 15, sometimes 20 percent of the cash income for a cow herd in a year's time. So we need to make sure that we get those cows identified early and get them marketed where they produce the most income for the ranch. You bet. And so does the earlier detection or later detection, you know, what, what are some of the reasons or, or economics behind getting that earlier detection? Well, hi historically, our, our cull cow market is good in September and October. And then when everybody starts weaning, you know, the October, November, December, when the corn picking's done and everything else, we get a, a glut of cull cows on the market and, and the bottom drops out of the market. So if we can get the cows identified early and get them marketed before we hit that November, December time frame, we're better off as far as, as cash income. How early, you know, we, we put the bulls in in the summer and, and we take the bulls out or we AI, how, how soon are you talking about? What's early diagnosis? Well, you know, in heifers particularly, we can go down to, with the use of ultrasound, we can go down to 30 days after we pull the bull out and detect those pregnancies, which is great on the yearling heifers because then we can get them marketed and get them into a feedlot and we can still have carcasses that will grade along with the steers. Right. Because so, they're young enough. Yep. So so that's something important on the heifers of just putting them in the normal cattle feeding situation and off we go. Right. If they're if they're not bred. If they're not bred. Uh, you know, if person doesn't have ultrasound, you know, typically we can start 35, 40 days after the bull's out, uh, you know, 60 fits a lot of people's time schedule. So waiting a couple months and, and, and doing that. Right. Well, it's a great start to the show, great topic, one that's pretty timely, one that you have a lot of experience with, and one I'm sure a lot of our viewers do as well. We're going to come back with Dr. Dave Rethorst after the break, talk a little bit more about what you do with those open cows. You're watching Doc Talk. See you in a minute. This hog is Hanover hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. Hello, I'm Dr. Chris Blevins at Kansas State University Veterinary Health Center, and I'm with you for a horse tip. Got to remember that a horse's feet are very important, and there's a uh, 
aspect of everyday uh, routine, uh, just moving around and use uh, on the farm or in performance. When you look at a horse's hoof and the hoof capsule, cleaning out the hoof is very important because they can get a lot of debris. They can get rocks inside uh, the grooves of their foot. They could even get a nail. So cleaning out the horse's feet are going to be very important and assessing on a day-to-day -day basis and while you're on rides taking and having a hoof pick is also going to be important to keeping everything clean and safe. So again, keep your farrier and your veterinarian involved for keeping your hoof healthy and free of debris. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Doc Talk, brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats in Overbrook, or visit us online at sftmeats.com. Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson and Dr. Dave Rethorst from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. We're having a great discussion this morning. Uh, about open cows and what to do with them, but let's let's get to let's talk a little bit about why they happen. Well, several reasons. Most common reason would be nutrition that the cows aren't in good enough shape going into breeding season. Uh, you know, we need to have these cows in a five to five and a half condition score going into breeding season, and and if we drop below that at the beginning of breeding season, you can just looking back at records that if you have a four, there's just about 5% more of those open than if they're a five. and just goes right on down the line. So, so getting good cover, and, and I think it's important to know that the cover and the fat, you know, helps drive normal physiology. Right. And, and whether, regardless of the species, so having them in that good condition score, drought situations, not weaning the calves on time, different things to that nature right. can all play a all, role. All play a role. Okay, so there's some management. Age of the cow have anything to do with it? Age of the cow will have something to do with it. Historically, our two-year-old cows that are just weaning their, their first calf are our biggest problem on getting them bred back just because they're young, they're still growing, trying to get enough nutrition in them where they'll milk for that calf and breed back is tough to do. If we can get those bred back, we'll have a little bit of a fallout as three-year-olds and, but then when we get start getting into that nine and ten year old cow, our pregnancy rates start dropping off again. Sure, and and uh, you know and and then the one that we probably, you know, the, the first two are management and understanding that those heifers are still growing even though they have a calf and 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 that we've got to get the right amount of groceries in them. But but then this last one, disease, biosecurity. What are some of the diseases that, that you vaccinate for or you think about when you think about open cows? Well, you know, historically everybody vaccinates for Vibrio and Lepto. Right. Uh, in 35 years of practice, I never diagnosed a case to Vibrio. So I really question sometimes if we need to, although it's an accepted practice, so that's fine. But I think more important than, than the Vibrio is BVD, BVD can cause open cows, it can cause weak calves, and, uh, and persistently infected calves causes sick calves in the feed yard. So BVD is important. The other big one that I never thought I'd see in the state of Kansas when I graduated from veterinary school was trichomoniasis, and we thought it was a uh, mountain disease, a cooperative grazing situation disease but the last few years we've seen it in Kansas and Nebraska and I've seen eight herds in, in the last four years but it's a biosecurity issue you need to watch what you do. Excellent well aside from all those making sure your bulls making uh, sure the bulls <laughs> fertile. <laughs> That's right folks it's a great discussion we've talked about when to preg we've talked about what causes some of these open cows when we come back we'll talk about the disposition and things that you can do on marketing these open cows. You're watching Doc Talk. We'll be back in a minute. Buying a car shouldn't be this hard. And at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, it isn't. It's actually awesome. Whether you want a new or used car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. Even if you want to custom order a new car or truck, 
Toby's team can make the deal. See Toby's team at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're awesome. Turn to a Central National Bank Ag Professional. You'll be in good company. They'll help you track expense lines, manage variable input costs, assess ground agreements, pick a crop protection plan. These times demand Ag Professionals. Central National Bank. You could profit from what they know. Ag operations run better on Central Time. Central National Bank. Money for life. Member FDIC and your hometown since 1884. This tip brought to you by Batrol 100 Enrofloxacin Injectable. Now approved for use in controlling BRD in high-risk cattle. Batrol 100, right the first time, whether it's controlling BRD in high-risk cattle or treating BRD. Hi there and welcome to today's On the Farm Tip, sponsored by my friends over at Bear Animal Health. We're going to talk about proper use of antibiotics in food animals. The first thing we want to make sure is that we have a valid veterinary client-patient relationship so that we make sure we pick the right drug for the syndrome or illness that the animals have. We want to make sure we have the proper route of administration, make sure that we have the proper dosage rates, and make sure that we're doing things that it says to do on the label. We want to make sure that we follow and adhere to label directions for the proper withdrawal time, meaning from the time I treat the animal until the point in time that that animal is clear or ready for slaughter. These are some things that are very important and that's your on the farm tip of the day as sponsored by Bear Animal Health. This is the fast track to more jobs and America's energy independence. Advanced performance is here, now. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine. Knowledge and service for the future of animal production. Tallgrass Commodities offers producers bulk commodities at a reasonable price with reliable service throughout the whole Midwest. To find out more about Tallgrass Commodities, visit tallgrass.us or call 785-494-8484. Doc Talk, brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Hey there, folks. Welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and I'm joined here by my friend and colleague at the Beef Cattle Institute, Dr. Dave Rethorst, who is a private practitioner in South Central Nebraska for 35 years. He practices in Kansas and Nebraska currently, and we're tickled to death to have him on the show. And we're talking about a topic, 20% of the revenue of our cow-calf operations. cow-calf operations, 15 to 20%. Come from cull cows. Come from cull cows. So we've got to get it done right. Yep. So how we market those cows can be important. Right. All right. And, and as we talked on earlier, getting the yearling heifer preg checked early, getting them in the feedlot, we're maximizing the income off of that heifer by doing that. Uh, if we can get the cows preg checked early uh, and get them on that September, October market, that's still a pretty decent market. Uh, we're in good shape as far as dollars per pound of cow. Now, if we get into November, December, that mm -hmm. we talked about how the bottom falls out of that market because of the glut of cows on the market, and, and a lot of people will delay marketing those cows they identify in November and December until we get into January, February, which is typically the highest time of the year as far as cull cow market. Uh, the thing we've got to watch there is that, you know, if, if those cows are in a five and a half to six condition score in November, December, my philosophy is you ought to go ahead and market them in November, December because they aren't going to get any better condition score than that. So let's we're going to end up with more net dollars that way 
than if we hold them till January or February and they lose 100 pounds. We might get more per hundred weight, but we're getting less total dollars. So we need to take a good look at well, that. Well, and those cows that have the more body condition on them are not going to be as efficient if you put them on grain or something like that. Right. They're, they're going to feed it at a nine or 10 feet efficiency versus these thinner cows that'll come in and feed it at a five, six, maybe right. a six. Right. Um, but it goes back, if you're going to feed cows before you sell them, they need to be thin cows and you get the most efficient gain. Yep, and, and part of the reason why people feed cows is that white fat market. Right. And, and what we mean by white fat is cows that have been on grass have more of a yellow tint from the beta carotene in the fat. And when we put them on a grain diet, it bleaches that fat or turns it to white. Right. So, um, you know, other options, well, corn prices probably play a little role in this too. $8 corn and a beef, uh, cold cows. Not, not a good deal. <laughs> 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 but uh, corn, unfortunately, fortunate for the cattle feeder, unfortunate for the corn producer, we're going to see a reverse in that. Right, right. We are, we are seeing that, and I think it's probably going to go lower from what I've been reading. Yeah, yeah. but uh, I think that, that understanding your, your uh, corn price, understanding your input costs, understanding what you potentially could gain, in an animal that's already in good body condition score versus one that's thin, all things and factors you need to roll in to, to before you're going to delay marketing and put them in that white fat market. Right. Run a pencil on it, do a partial budget, figure out what's best, get you the most net dollars. Great. When we come back, we'll wrap up on cold cows and selling open cows with Dr. Dave Rathors. Car Waters has what you need for all seasons for around the farm and home. Working, hunting, growing, feeding, snow removal, even fun for the kids. And a service department with experienced techs to help keep your equipment in top running condition. Car Waters has a huge selection and the best prices. Tarwater Farm and Home, family owned and operated since 1978. They have what you need. Meet the Veterinarian, brought to you by Zuprevo. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprevo for BRD treatment. Dr. Randall Spare is president of Ashland Veterinary Clinic, the largest veterinary practice in southwest Kansas. He focuses on bovine care, especially cow-calf production, and at AABP in 2013, he received the award for developing an outstanding preventative medicine program for beef production. A graduate of K-State School of Veterinary Medicine, Dr. Spare and his wife, Michelle, have five children. Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We are having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Hi there folks, Dr. Dan from K-State. Are you BQA certified? Well, if not, you should be. If you work with beef cattle in any aspect, whether it's cow, calf, stalker, or feedlot, or if you work in an auction market, if you're a 4-H or an FFA member, or if you're ancillary to the beef industry, it's something that you need to do and become familiar with. Beef Quality Assurance has been around for over 25 years and it serves as a cornerstone of education to help producers identify management processes that can be improved. Not only have those that are involved with the beef industry embraced BQA because it's the right thing to do, they have also gained through increased profitability. Traditionally, BQA training is offered face-to-face -face through your state coordinator, and it still is. But today, you can also have this educational opportunity, which can be obtained through the Beef Quality Assurance online training provided by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica. Go to the website, bivi-bqa.com, 
where you can register and become BQA certified at no cost to you between now and October 31st. Also, if you register and become certified between now and October 31st, you can also be entered into a drawing to win some great prizes, including a tailgate package valued at $500. It's a great program. It's been around for almost three decades. It's a cornerstone to safe, wholesome, affordable beef. It's Beef Quality Assurance. Get certified today. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. This segment is brought to you by Tarwater Farm and Home. Come on by, we'll treat you like family. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Dave Rethorst. We both work at the Beef Cattle Institute at Kansas State University. We've been talking about what to do with those open cows. And, and we've talked about when to preg, which cows and heifers are gonna be more of the trouble uh, we've talked about some of the reasons why we have animals that are open and then we've talked about marketing those cold cows or open cows and you know in this day and age of animal welfare practices and and hidden cameras and and let's throw all that aside let's talk about doing the right thing and, and I always talk to people about if you're going to market an animal it should be something you'd be proud enough to put your picture on there with him or her on the front page of the paper yep on the front page of the paper or if it was something you'd feed your own family. Yep, great comparisons. If, if you're not going to feed it to your own kids, why sell it to somebody else to feed to their kids? Yep. You know, we, we want to make sure that these cows are in good condition score. We need, my personal thoughts, we need a minimum of a three, three and a half. I'd prefer a four as a minimum going to market. Uh, for body condition score? For body condition score. Absolutely. You know, and, and some of these animals, first of all, they got to be able to walk. Right. You can't ship a non-ambulatory animal. Right. Well, it's against the law to ship a non-ambulatory animal. Absolutely. And and let's not ship the ones that, that you know, if you think they're going to go down on the truck. Right. I've worked enough sale barn work that, you know, some of these cows come in to go through and they're so thin you can't even get them through the chute. So if you try to tag them, they go down and... and you end up dragging them out of the chute and, and euthanizing those animals. And you just as well do that on the ranch rather than bring them to town. Yeah, and we have to remember that what we do in a public setting, that we put the auction markets in a terrible situation when we bring those animals that aren't of quality. We put them in a, in a, in a pretty precarious situation and, and we understand that they are, they are a great tool for marketing cattle in this country. Right. But they're not a lymph node for, for weak and disabled right. cattle. Those animals either need to be treated and recovered or euthanized. Or euthanized on the ranch. And, and you know, the, even, even ones that can make it through, you know, like the, the cancer eyes or some of these clinical yonis cows or things like that, you know, that just shouldn't be in the food chain. Well, they wind up being condemned when they get to slaughter. Right. So why put the animal or the people through it? Right. Most people, we got to remember, are doing the right thing. We're just talking about educating and, and moving the industry and improving. We've got to get a little bit better every day, as Coach Schneider says. You and Coach Schneider got that right. Folks, thanks for watching Doc Talk today. Dr. Dave, thanks for being with us. It's Good to be here. Show. Great to have you on the show. Great show, great information. Remember, always work with your local practitioner. And if you want to know more about what we do here at Kansas State University, you can find us on the web at www.vet.ksu.edu. You've been watching Doc Talk. I'm certainly glad that you joined us today. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson from Kansas State University, and I'll see you down the road. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. <laughs>